Hello everyone. This is Paul Lucas inviting you to stay tuned for the next half hour for one of radio's outstanding dramatic productions. Proudly we hail. And now another Proudly We Hail, one of radio's outstanding dramatic half hours starring Paul Lucas and presented transcribed coast to coast in cooperation with this station by your Army and your Air Force. From Radio City, New York, here is your star on Proudly We Hail, the distinguished Broadway stage, screen, and radio star, Paul Lucas. Thank you, Kenneth Bancroft. Ladies and gentlemen, our play is entitled From West to East and Back Again. The scene, Berlin, the time today. Our story, a tale of table turning behind the Iron Curtain. Our first act curtain will rise in just a moment after this short but very important message. Can you hold on a man's job? If your answer is yes, there's a man's job waiting for you in our rapidly expanding United States Army. Visit your nearest United States Army and United States Air Force recruiting station and get all the details today. And now with your star, Paul Lucas, in the role of Stefan Donner, your Army and your Air Force present the proudly we hail production from west to east and back again. A raw wind sweeping in from the marshes pushed its way rudely up the street. It fingered and tore at the edges of the large poster which had been put up a week ago. The poster was of a man's face, a strong, dominant face, bearing an air of haughty indifference. Near the bottom, in white block letters, slashed at an angle, was the name Donner, and below that, in smaller, more stylized print, a date. Across the street, on the floor above, a short, thick-set man stood before a window, puffing his pipe and looking down at the poster. He seemed deeply interested in the face staring back at him with such obvious arrogance. What are you going to do, stand there all morning? I might. I haven't all day, Anadolf. I've been looking at the poster of Donner across the street, and I've been thinking about him. Donner? You mean that, that music fellow? Yes, Stefan Donner. A man with a big name, known the world over. He travels pretty much where he chooses. Some of our superiors feel honored to entertain him. They're amused by his arrogance, and as long as he remains neutral above the affairs of the earth, they find no quarrel with him. What more beautiful front could a man have? A front? Why, you mean that... Read the file on that desk on him. In the last six months, he's been in four places where there have been incidents of one sort or another. Coincidence? You read it and tell me. All right. But what have you in mind? A simple but charming plan. Donna arrives here today. He gives a concert tonight. We shall call upon him shortly after he arrives. We shall offer him a very large sum of money to come out publicly for our cause. It will be very simply worded that after observing conditions on both sides, he has reached the conclusion that we are the true workers for peace, whereas those of West seek only to spread their imperialist empire at the risk of total war or some such words. Well, from all you've said and from what little I've heard of him, he'll tell us to go to the devil. Yes, that's possible, but Koda... For some time now, we've been in need of a strong propaganda blow. I'm quite aware of that. You think this Donner is going to give it to us? At the end of the concert, Donner makes a statement. Every newspaper, every radio station will have orders to play it up big. Donner leaves for Western Berlin amidst our cheers. Shortly after he gets there, he disappears. We hit it hard. We arouse the interest of the world. You can picture it, I'm sure. For a week, we build on it. Then he's found, dead. Murdered, and the evidence points conclusively towards the lovers of democracy. Very nice. But how does that come out? He'll be found by a newspaper man, ostensibly a staunch supporter of theirs, actually one of our men. The details have all been worked out. I assure you, the explosion will be loud and greatly to our benefit. And if he's one of their agents, so much the better. <laughs> Your idea, Anadov? My idea, Koda and already fully approved by the powers above. Uh, how much
much longer, Ring. Another half hour, sir. Oh, I wish we'd driven. Will we be uh, meeting a friend, sir? No, no, this one is trade. No friends, no enemies, just the concert. Quite a relief, if I may say so, sir. Mm, you may. <laughs> it seems almost unnatural. A rare interval in our travels. Almost like a vacation. <laughs> a weekend at Brighton, hearing. Well, wake me up before we get in. <sighs> Once the accommodations seem passable. Quite a bit better than I expected, sir. Hmm, even this isn't too bad. Close the door, Ring. I am in to no one. I don't care if that... Now, who I'll that... send them away, sir. Now, I'll handle this. Gentlemen... Or whatever you are, I am busy. We are most sorry to intrude, sir. We'll take but a moment of your time. A moment would be more than I could spare. Why don't you write me a... The moment we wish to take may well prove golden to you. Golden? What are you talking about? A proposition to our mutual benefit. May we commit? All right. All right, but please be brief. In here. Sit down. Thank you. Now, who are you and what is it? I am Mr. Anidov. This is Mr. Koda. We are with the administration. Good for you. How does that affect me? If you'd like to make $50,000 in American money, I think it would affect you. 50000 Are you joking? <laughs> Not at all. And what must I do? To receive this sum of money. Me merely want you to make a statement at the close of your concert tonight. This statement. Huh. I see. Uh, I should have thought so much. Well, I am a musician. I have no interest in your politics. I leave it to those who make it their profession. I wouldn't ask you to play the piano. This is somewhat different. It concerns people. Right, right, right. Rut. To me, it is the same, and even if it wasn't, it would be very bad for my business to choose sides. In what way? Well, it's elementary. Suppose I made a statement in favor of your opponents on the other side. Would you let me give concerts here? No, you would not. If I make this statement for you, they won't let me play there. They're far more lenient than their approach, are they not? Well, I wouldn't know, but I do know I can't afford to jeopardize my income for you or anyone. Suppose we... Double the figure. The equivalent of $100,000 in any bank you name. Would you mind telling me why I, a lowly player of the piano, have that much value to you people, regardless of what I say? Certainly. Because you are not lowly. And because since the war you have refused to take either side. If you take it now, the propaganda value is worth that much to us. Hmm. Well, I don't like the idea. I like the money. Uh, go away and let me think it over. Call me at six and I'll give you an answer. Good enough. I hope we can do business. Monkey business. I'd say the whole thing has a rather strong odor. Well, I'd suggest you turn it down, sir. Hmm. To be or not to be. Now, I say no to them. What happens? They might say, all right, if you can't be for us, you're against us. You can't cross the curtain. Then I am of no more use. I'm quite sure they wouldn't pull the obvious, throw me in prison, have me sign a confession and the usual thing. No, no, my reputation is too well established as being neither fish nor fowl. It would hurt them. But, uh... If you do agree, what then, sir? What then, indeed? They'll make a big thing of it. And we may find things a bit difficult on the other side, but it should make things easier here, and that, after all, is what we want. Still, I've never found them to be so direct and simple about such things. Ah, there is always an underlying motive. 
Exactly, sir. Well, we play with the cards we hold, Rink. We play with the cards we hold. I have a few words to say, but they do not concern music. Since the war, you have known me to be neutral. I have taken neither one side or the other in this world of armed camps, and so I have been fortunate in being able to observe conditions on both sides of the fence, so to speak. I have finally come to the conclusion that although I know nothing of politics or such things, you people here in the East are truly striving for peace, while powers of the West seem only intent upon expansion and their own imperialistic aims. I offer you my congratulations for the fine and noble spirit. Well, the fets in the fire. I can hear it sizzling, sir. I suspect our reception in Berlin will be somewhat noisy. <laughs> I'd like to see Richard's face when he hears the news. It's a very convincing speech. Well, I thought so. Uh, do you think I should go into politics, Ring? If I may be so bold, I think I'd stick to the piano, sir. Oh. Would you like to give us a statement, Herr Donner? I have made all the statements I'm going to make. Did you make that speech voluntarily? Completely. Would you mind telling us your reasons? Well, I suggest you read the speech. It should be perfectly clear. And now, please, if you'll excuse me... No, no, no. That is all, that is all. Stefan, until we're able to check with our friends there, you better lay low. You agree it was the best thing to do? Who can say? It was certainly the boldest. And this is the bold business, Richard. Mm, I know, I know. I'll have a car pick you up here at 8, and you can stay at that place in the country. Well, what about Ring? I want him here. There'll be plenty of inquiries. What are you looking so pained about? Are you sorry that I've become a rich man? No, no. I just look pained naturally. Get that. Probably from Richard. What do I say? Who is it, Rink? Rink, who? Just hold it right there. I'm terribly sorry, sir. Shut I... up. Keep him quiet. Get out of here, you thugs. Stop pointing that stupid gun at me. Sit down and be quiet, or we'll really give you something to yell about. Who the devil are you, and what do you want? You're going on a little trip with us. It's called From West to East. And back again. Tie him up. Paul Lucas, starring in the role of Stefan Donner in the proudly we hail production from west to east and back again, will return in just a moment for the second act. You young men who graduated from high school in the class of 51, listen to this. There's a real opportunity for you in the expanding United States Army. And you can continue your education, too. You see, the Army gives its soldiers the finest technical training in the world. Today's soldiers go to excellent schools where they learn to do a job and do it right. What's more, in the Army, you can even get a college degree through USAFI, the United States Armed Forces Institute. And because our Army is expanding so rapidly, promotions come fast. Remember, there's lots of room at the top. You'll lead an interesting, healthy life, too, and work side by side with other intelligent young Americans. An army uniform is the mark of a man. So if you think you can fill a man's shoes, go to your nearest United States Army and United States Air Force recruiting station and find out what the army has to offer you. Enlist today. You are listening to Proudly We Hail, 
And now, with your star, Paul Lucas, in the role of Stefan Donner, we present the second act of From West to East and Back Again. No, sir, nothing. No trace whatever. Four days now, sir. I assure you, I don't like it either. He's not only one of our best men, he's also a good friend. Yes, sir, I, I think it's directly attached to the statement he made. You notice how they've been playing it up. No, I couldn't get anything there either. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, we'll keep at it. Goodbye, sir. Comrade Donner, we seem to have fallen upon hard times. Ah, the light bothers your eyes, huh? I shouldn't wonder after four days in this darkness, enough to make a mole out of a man. Have you been treated well? You've been making headlines, you know, since you've been here. I would like to read about you in the obituary column. <laughs> your downfall was your importance. I can't believe you are so naive as to think you can make it stick. What do you mean by that? I see you take me for a complete fool. Stephen Donner begs the ease. Stephen Donner disappears in the West. Stephen Donner is finally found dead in the West, murdered by the evil, decadent, imperialistic monsters because he was brave enough to declare himself against them. Poppycock. How much do you think even your own people will swallow? Oh, they'll swallow it. And so will all the rest. Well... I will leave you now. When you drop in again, perhaps I'll have something more to tell you. <laughs> Good. I'll give you some time to think up something. Pleasant dream. You heard it, Ring. I did, sir. We have three days to get out of here. Three years, and I don't see how we do it, sir. They're very careful. Keep us in the dark. Then when they open the door, blind us with a light. It takes only one man. Yes, I know. While the great Mr. Anadov was rubbing the salt in the wound, I noticed something. My eyes got something used to that light. There is a pipe that runs along the ceiling. A pipe, sir? Yes, a pipe ring. Stand up here and reach above your head. There, I, I can just touch it. Afraid I'm a little too short, sir. A water pipe or something like that. What do you have in mind, sir? You have your belt? My belt? Yes, take it off. You need it to hang yourself. To hang? Oh, oh, but, sir, I... I... No, no, don't worry, don't worry. We'll hang together. Only it won't be fatal. At least to us. I don't believe I understand you. When our jailer next returns, and let us pray that this time he comes alone, he will find us hanging from this. Or so he will think. But the... But how can we hang ourselves, sir, without hanging ourselves? Now, it'll be somewhat uncomfortable, but it should look authentic. Our backs will be to the door. Now, make a loop of your belt. Come on, I'll show you. There. Now, put it around your chin. We'll give it a few practice tries. But supposing it is possible to hang by the chin, how do we get down? By raising your head, you can slip out. But the strain. It should only be for a second. We hear the guard at the door, we get ready, he opens the door, sees us hanging, and he'll either rush in or run for help. Either way, we are through hanging. You make it sound so simple, sir. Uh, it's a chance, Rank, right now. It's the only chance we've got, unless you can think of something else. No, sir, but it'll take some doing. Well, let, let them start practicing. And remember, Rank, around your chin, not around your throat. Now. Take care of him. I'll get the light. There. We we'll use the belts on him. Gag him and get his gun. I guess they're looking for us. I wouldn't be a bit surprised. Should we try to get our bearings, make for the western zone? It's exactly what they'll expect us to do. We wouldn't stand a chance in a million of getting through that way. We can't stay here forever, sir. Not forever, Ring. Just until daylight. At that time, I'm sure our friend Anadov will be trailing smoke. I don't care how difficult it is. 
I want them found. Turn out every man you got. I want the house to house search. I want every street watched. Have your men moving toward the western zone. They're somewhere between here and there. Stupid fools, I want that guy shot. Shot, do you hear? You'll find them, or I'll have you shot too. All of you, incompetent, bungling, black-headed idiots. That... <laughs> don't breathe, Blake. Just don't breathe. What about this place? Are we expected to search every bound of rabbit warren? You are at the orders. You are looking there. I'll take this one and hurry it up. It's almost daylight. Long night, Ring. Frankly, sir, I'd rather it stayed dark. How can we expect to get out of this in broad daylight? With a little luck, Mr. Anadov is going to help us. I mean alive, sir. <laughs> You've been in the dark too long, Ring. It's dulled your brain. We know that since our disappearance, the newspapers and the radio in this zone have been making a big thing out of it. You heard what Anadov said. They probably printed my picture everywhere they could, impress me on everyone's mind, build me up, make me a hero. And then when reaction has reached concert pitch bang, they produce my late lamented remains, slightly the worse for wear. And mine, sir. Oh, forgive me, and yours. We've spoiled Anadov's game by getting away. Naturally, he'd expect us to try and get into the western zone and expose the whole thing. Only we are going to do just the opposite. In a few minutes, we are going to walk out of here big as life. We are going to say good morning to people. And we are going to end up in front of the largest newspaper, you know, the one. And there we are going to be thoroughly recognized. And then, sir? And then, Rink, we'll transpose the score from flats to sharps and see how the music plays. And so I said to him, I am Stefan Donner. Stefan Donner! Do you hear, you crawling bag of fleas? Stefan Donner, who has played before that... I beg your pardon, sir. You are Stefan Donner? Your eyes are good, even if your manners aren't. Whom did you take me for? The King of France? Well, but, sir, you've been missing, you... you... Please stop your informal shouting, missing, missing. What have I been missing? But you disappeared. We, we thought... Hands! It's Stefan Donner! I assure you, I'm annoyed by this whole thing. You say for five days I've been the subject of an intensive search. Is there no privacy left to a man? Can't he go away for a few days without everyone thinking it has been fully dealt with? Who would want to harm me unless it was some stupid music critic? You want a statement for your newspaper? All right, I'll give it to you. It pains me to live in a world full of hysterical nincompoops who... Oh... Oh, uh, there you are, Anadov. Uh, Would you mind telling these good people that I'm perfectly all right, I have always been perfectly all right, and that's exactly how I expect to remain? Well? We, we, we were worried about you. Oh, how good of you, how very good of you. Well, you can stop worrying, all of you. Brink, what time is it? Uh, uh, just before 10, sir. I've got to be in the western zone by 10.30. Oh, Anadov, if you are so concerned about my welfare, would you care to drive me to the border? What? what? Yes, of course. It, it, it will be a pleasure. Fine. Now I have one more thing to say to you news people. Last week I made a speech. You remember? All right. Today I take back what I said. What's that? I take no sides. I am for Stefan Donner and no one else. Anadov... I'll give you back what you paid me for saying those things. Well, well, did you hear that? <laughs> well, Anadov, as Mr. Shakespeare said, all is well that ends well, hey? Uh, Rink, uh, do you think he's lost his powers of speech? I wouldn't be surprised, sir looks on the verge of explosion. Anadov, are you planning to explode? You mustn't take it so hard. Such things happen every day, I'm told. Ah, ha, ha. 
at last we come to where East meets West. Eleanor, we thank you for the ride. I must say, I enjoyed it. Oh, wait, wait. Uh, do you, do you suppose I could obtain sanctuary in the American sector? Hmm. Sanctuary? Why don't you ask the man at all? It's better to be laughed at than shot, isn't it? Star Paul Lucas will return with a word about next week's show in just a moment. Here's a special message to the high school class of 51. The United States Army, the senior service, needs capable young men, men with ambition who want to continue their education. If you can fill the bill, the Army will send you to one of its fine technical schools to study radio, radar, electronics, meteorology, or mechanics. You'll not only get the finest training in the world, but you'll have the special pride that goes with wearing the uniform of the United States Army, the mark of a man. You'll find there are plenty of chances to get ahead, for our Army is growing fast, and keen young men can grow with it. So why not get all the facts about what the Army has to offer you? Just go to your nearest United States Army and United States Air Force recruiting station. Have a talk with your recruiting sergeant and learn more about the Army. This has been another program on Proudly We Hail, presented transcribed in cooperation with this station by the United States Army and the United States Air Force Recruiting Service. Proudly We Hail stars Paul Lucas. From West to East and Back Again was written by DeWitt Kopp. The music was composed and conducted by John Guarnieri. This program was produced under the supervision of Charles and Rogers Productions and was directed by Charles Wilkes. This is Kenneth Banghart speaking, and here again is your host and star... Paul Lucas. We cordially invite you to be with us again next week over the same station for Proudly We Hail. Our story is entitled The Last Chance. We hope you'll join us then. Until next week, goodbye. <laughs>